a lot of the slowdown actually comes from those sectors that in the past we thought of as having been drivers of productivity growth, so areas like pharmaceuticals. The productivity slowdown offers the backdrop to this. And then we have additional challenges. We've got the, uh, the, the, the transition to net zero. I still believe is underappreciated in policy circles what a wrenching economic transition that's going to be. You know, we've had, uh, to, to some extent, we've made good progress in the UK in decarbonisation, but largely by doing the easy things first, as, of course, what one should do. But uh, there's a huge way to go in decarbonising the transport system, decarbonising uh, domestic heating, which is a huge consumer of fossil fuels, decarbonising energy supplies for industry. But we've got that wrenching transition. I think that's going to depend on innovation to make that cheap and achievable. Security, since the end of the Cold War, we've had a peace dividend. It's arguable that we kind of consumed our peace dividend. We cashed it in and used it for consumption rather than other forms of, uh, of investment. But, you, you know, that peace dividend is in question again. It, clearly, the, the world seems a much more dangerous place. Uh, so some resources will need to be reapplied to those questions of security. So you get this sense of a whole bunch of issues coming together and this slowdown in productivity perhaps underlying all of them. If we think that productivity growth is driven by innovation and we think technological innovation is a big part of that, then that's telling us that something's not working in the connection between science, technology, innovation and productivity growth. 